Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you. This is Vocabulary by Etymology, episode 24. And these are the words which we are going to discuss in today's session. Aeolian harp, cynosure, laconic, mnemonic, platonic, sapphic, Socratic, and solecism. So let's start. Aeolian harp. So Aeolian harp is a box-shaped instrument with strings that produce musical sounds when the wind blows on them. Aeolus was the king or guardian of the winds. He lived in a cave with his, ma with his many sons and daughters and sent forth whatever wind Zeus asked for. When Odysseus stopped there on his way home from Troy, he got a bag of winds to fill his sails. But when he was asleep, his men, thinking it had treasure, opened the bag and released the raging winds, which blew their ships all the way, all the way back to their starting point. The next word is cynosia. It means a guide or center of attention. In Greek, kynosora means dog's tails. And in Latin, cynosia means the constellation Ursa Minor or Little Bear. The first star on the dog's or bear's tail is Polaris, the North Star, long used as a guide for travelers lost on a clear night, since, unlike the other stars, it always remains in the same position in the northern sky while the other constellations slowly revolve around it. Since Sinosura also meant the star itself, the English, the English Sinosura now means both guide and center of attention. The next word is laconic. It means using extremely few words. Ancient Sparta was located in the region of Greece known as Laconia, and the Greek word Laconikos may mean both Laconian and Spartan. The disciplined and militaristic Spartans, the finest warriors of their time, were known for putting up with extreme conditions without any complaints. So English writers who knew the ancient history started using Laconic to describe the habit of saying few words. The next word is mnemonic. It means having to do with the memory, assisting the memory. The Greek word for memory is Nemosyne. Nemosyne was also the goddess of memory and the mother of, mu of the muses. The next word is platonic. It means involving a close relationship from which romance and sex are absent. The philosopher Plato represented his theories in a series of dramatic conversations between Socrates and other people. Among many other important concepts, he taught that everything here on earth is a pale imitation or shadow of its ideal form. And this form is now often called the platonic form. Close but non-sexual friendship also uh, between two people who might be thought to be romantically attracted today is today known as platonic love or friendship. The next word is sapphic. It means lesbian. The poet Sappho wrote poems of the self-reflection and passion. Some of them were redirected to the woman attending the school she conducted on the Greek island of Lesbos around 600 BC. Because of Sappho, the island of Lesbos also gave its name to lesbianism, which writers used to call sapphic love. The next word is Socratic. It means having to do with the philosopher Socrates or with his teaching method. Socrates lived and taught in Athens in the 5th century BC. Today, Socrates is best remembered for his method of teaching by asking increasingly difficult questions. This generally involves the use of Socratic induction, a way of gradually arriving at, at generalizations through a process of questions and answers, and Socratic irony, in which the teacher pretends ignorance while questioning his students skillfully to make them aware of their errors in understanding. Next word is solecism. It is a grammatical mistake in speaking or writing. In ancient Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, there was a city called Soloi, Soloi, where the inhabitants spoke Greek that was full of grammatical errors. So the errors in grammar and later also minor errors in formal social behavior came to be known as solecisms. Okay guys, this was it for this episode. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode and please subscribe to my channels.